Hello, everybody. This is Sunil Tolsiani, founder of Private Investment Club. I'm doing another, yet another expert interview with one of the great PIC members, somebody who had a great success, and her name is Fanny Newport. Fanny is from London, Ontario. She's an author, she's a real estate investor, and she has got an amazing story how she started with PIC and what she did when she came to PIC. And then she wrote her goals, and then one day, what happened to her? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Fanny Newford. Fanny, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sunny, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's an You're honor good. for me. You're welcome. Oh, well, let's, you know, uh, Fanny, let's get right into it. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Go ahead. So, I'm a real estate investor. I started in uh, 2016, I bought my first property. And then the next year, I bought the second one. The third year, I was stuck. I couldn't, I couldn't keep buying because the bank told me I had enough. Wow. And then that's when I, I was lucky. I discovered that Jack Enfield is coming to Toronto. And I went just there to see Jack Enfield. <laughs> <laughs> and then I discovered PIC membership. And then I become a PIC member. And uh, you, you offer me 30 minutes coaching. And then I told you what's going on and you told me what to do and I did it. And from that day, I purchased two more property with zero down. Zero down, that's awesome. Zero well, we're, we're gonna get into how you did that. By the way, those of you who do not know what PIC stand for, stands for, it's, it's, it's private investment club, uh, a real an elite club that I founded and basically Fanny came to an event with Jack Canfield, myself, uh, we were speaking at this event with some of the other, other experts and she came to the event that we were producing with Jack and then from there, she decided that she wanted to become wealthy in real estate and she was stuck. And then you know she wanted to, uh, she wanted to uh, make money in real estate and then ended up becoming a PIC member. So uh, let's talk about a few more things right now before we do this. Um, uh, Let's talk about coronavirus because you know there's a lot of people who are worried they, they are fearful and all that what's your take on coronavirus uh for me uh it doesn't what's going on what matters is how you react to it the coronavirus is there unfortunately some people are dying but what we have to do is to do what they ask us to do to stay home and do what we want to do from home because now we're so lucky we have technology, we can work from home. So there's no excuse of saying I'm bored, I don't have anything to do. We can be creative and work from home and keep doing our business. Of course, some business needs uh, uh, people to come in, but like for real estate, you can still invest in from home. You can awesome. talk to mortgage people, you can look for properties from home, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, so from, from a point of view of um, a real estate investor, uh, you just mentioned that you, we can still do it. Uh, during the coronavirus, uh, give us your feedback, your thinking about real estate, where the real estate, uh, should people invest in real estate? Uh, and if so, how do they do invest safely? What's your feedback on that? I think no matter what's going on, people, we always need a shelter. People, we always need food and shelter. So it, I think real estate, we keep going on, but we have to be careful because we don't know what's going on. So what I'm thinking to be careful is uh, not to spend money on unnecessary thing. I think you have to save up some money or have some cash available because maybe at the end, there will be more opportunity to buy. Yes, yes, and, yeah. and, so and, and, and be ready, be ready, be ready, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so, so in order to be ready, what are a couple of things that one can do during these coronavirus time? Uh, probably any time, but during mm -hmm. coronavirus time, what could one somebody do right now to prepare if there's an opportunity coming up? So if you, you are already a real estate investor, so you know what to do. Yes. You just have to raise more money, 
or have some cash available for you. But if you're a beginner, use this time to learn, to make mm -hmm. contact. Yeah, now you cannot go to Meetup, but there's so many webinars every single day. Go to them, meet people online, and do joint venture if you don't know how to do, and learn from them. Right, right, right. So, so we talked about, when you came in, we talked about, you came to uh, one of my events with Jack, uh, and then became a PIC member. And once you became a PIC member, um, we had a session together. And uh, then, and I know you have attended a uh, PIC meeting after that as well. Mm -hmm. So what, tell us the story. Tell us, let's say from the time that you became a member, mm -hmm. then you told me a story where you said, you know, uh, you were at the PIC meeting and then I asked you to do something like write a goal or something and you wrote it. Tell me about that story. Go ahead. Yeah. So on that event with Jack and Pim, there was a mastermind the next day. Yes. So on the mastermind, you give us a uh, notebooks and you told us to write a goal and the time we want to achieve that goal. And I wrote the goal and they said by December 31st, I want to have a uh, real estate with a value of 1 million. I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why not? Let me write it. I wrote it down. I didn't get to the goal on December 31st, but I did on uh, January 17th. So you were 17 days late. 17 days late, <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, so um, just, just remind us what date uh, did you write the goal or do, or do you remember? It was June 2nd. 2nd of June, 9, yeah. 20, 2019. Maybe. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So give us, um, <clears throat> give us uh, how you, because a lot of people keep asking me, Sunil, mm -hmm. they, they're saying, Sunil, can we still buy properties? Nothing down. And, and of course, I have bought it many, many times. Many of my members have bought it many, many times and, and all that kind of stuff. And so we wanna, I want you to take me through your first deal after you became a member mm -hmm. uh, because I, I know you already bought two before. Yeah. And then you were stuck and then now you became a member. So now tell me about your uh, third deal, I guess, or the first deal as a big member. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So you told me that I can do a joint venture or hard money lenders. So the third one, I went with a joint venture. So that means somebody who has money but doesn't have time to manage or doesn't even want to do anything. And you bring your skills, your expertise, and you do everything, and the person brings your money, and you spread half up. Okay, so, so let's take this through. Uh, how did you find the deal? Uh, because I, I go to so many meetups, and I look on uh, MLS, and I look on KGG, I'm always looking. I found this one on MLS. Where? MLS, uh, yeah. realtor.ca. Yeah, yeah, oh, realtor.ca, okay. Yeah. That's and? where I find it. And uh, I contact my, the person I knew who was interested and then he, he accepted to join me. Okay, so, so, so take me through, uh, you found the deal, you did the due diligence, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so you found the deal, you did the due diligence and mm -hmm. then you have a joint venture partner. Yes. Explain to me how this joint venture worked for you for this property and, and, and take us through this. Uh, if somebody who has never done it before, somebody who's sitting there watching saying, you know what, I, I've never done it. I don't think it's doable. I want, I want them to learn. Go ahead, tell me. So because uh, the person already showed me interest, he was interested, yes. but he didn't have time. And so when I reach out to him, I say, look, this is a really good property. I know it's a good location and it's in London, but I can manage it. And I already have experience. Are you interested in uh, coming with me to buy this property? And uh, he looked at it and he saw it's a nice property and said, yeah. And so far he's so happy. Every three months I send him a report to tell him what's going on, what uh, expenses we had, what revenue. I keep him informed with what's going on. So he's happy. 
Okay, so let's talk about the actual, uh, you, you're talking to him, he's interested. So tell us about the setup, how was set up? For example, you know, obviously he brought uh, the, the money and uh, mm -hmm. how did the financing work? Uh, how did, who got the mortgage and everything? So we have to go to use a lawyer, for sure. Everything mm -hmm. has to go through a lawyer, make sure everybody's safe, everybody's safe, both sides. And the lawyer write down what's going on and what will happen if one wants to get out. He made sure everything is clear before we even do anything. And sure. the person bring the down payment and closing costs. And because I'm the one who get the income and pay expenses, and then I report to him every three months. So who got the mortgage? It's in my name. It's in name. Okay, so let's let's recap this for everybody here. Mm -hmm. um, there's many ways to do joint ventures. You know, like like for example, I have a, I took the course with Robert Allen when I left the police force, 2005, mm -hmm. and I would have retired actually as a police officer yesterday. Oh. 30 years, yes. Uh, you know, uh, but the point here is when I took his course, there was a 50 ways to do nothing down. And of course, there's many ways to do joint ventures within those 50 ways. So one of the joint venture ways that Benny did was she found the deal, the investor who doesn't have the time has the money, which is what we have at Private Investment Club. We have a lot of millionaires and multimillionaires uh, who are investing with each other and doing joint ventures. And so what Fanny did was this person uh, put the down payment and the closing cost. Fanny, was there any expenses for fix-ups? No, really. No, no. it was okay. ready. Yeah. Was okay. Ready so so yeah. it was a ready property and she yeah. bought this property and uh, I'm going to ask her about the, mm -hmm. the arrangements and the income and the value and all that stuff. But she buys it. And then somebody comes along and says, I'll be your down payment partner. So this strategy is called down pay payment partner strategy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so <clears throat> the down payment partner brings the closing cost. And if there's any repairs, they pay that, they bring that as well. And then the, the down payment as well as closing costs. So mm -hmm. down payment, closing cost, repairs. In this case, there was no repairs. Okay. And then and then Fanny got... Uh, you know, she, she, she obviously learned uh, as a PIC member as to how to do some of this stuff. And then she got the mortgage under her name using somebody else's down payment. Exactly. And Fanny, is it true then that after that, you two are 50-50 partners or how did you set up? Yeah, that's 50-50. 50-50 partners. 50 /50. So does that mean that uh, the, the down payment partner gets 50% of cash flow? Absolutely, he get fifty percent of cash flow, and I get fifty percent of cash flow. And, and it is true that he will also will get fifty percent of the profits uh, of the say uh, uh, when the appreciation occurs, let's say five years from now. Absolutely. And he also gets fifty percent of the mortgage pay down that occurs naturally. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, so important thing to understand is that a lot of people say. You know, it's not possible to get a, a partner that will put all the money and, and do 50-50. In fact, Fanny's doing him a favor by doing all the work for free. Exactly. She's, yeah. she's, she's a professional. She's a member of my club and she, she's connecting. She's the one who's finding a good deal. And she's the one who's putting all that stuff. And he basically comes in and makes more money, more return on his investment without uh, taking a lot of risks. And because exactly. there's always a risk, right? There's always exactly. a risk. Yeah. Exactly. So, so Fanny, um, tell us a little bit about um, this deal. Is it cash flowing? Give us a little bit about that stuff. Yeah, it is. It's cash flowing, and uh, the good thing is that like, if a tenant has a problem, he doesn't contact my joint venture. He contact me. And also before before that, to screen tenant. That's my job. I screen the tenant and make sure I have the best tenant. Yes. And my partner. Just stay there and do nothing and just to get money every month. That's it. Very good. Very good. I'm going to ask you later on as we finish uh, uh, how people can get hold of you, uh, Fanny. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, if you don't mind, you've given me some numbers on this property. Mm -hmm. let's, let's inspire people uh, how much money is made or can be made or 
what's going on with this property. And uh, was it was it, for example, when you say it's, it was a good deal, explain something to me. Go ahead. So uh, we bought this property is a two bedroom apartment. And 180,000 because it's in London, it's not Toronto. 180. <laughs> and right now, uh, in December complex, they are selling for uh, 220, 230. Mm -hmm. And uh, after all expenses, we have roughly between 450. It depends if there is anything we are uh, renovation in the meantime, around four, between 4 and 450 every month. Cash flow. Cash yeah. flow. Positive cash flow. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so when you got it at one eighty, and if it's worth two twenty five, even let's say, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, uh, approximately um, sixteen or seventy percent below market value. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. If it was twenty percent below market value, then it would have been uh, um, it would have been forty thousand dollars, let's say. But in this case, it was one eighty to twenty forty five. Actually, it is twenty percent below market value approximately yeah. so you bought so that's what you mean by good deal right you bought it below market exactly. value exactly okay and in a good location in a good location with producing cash flow positive cash flow positive cash flow yeah. and, and and i want to make sure that people understand that when you say positive cash flow you mean uh after paying the monthly expenses including uh, uh mortgage Age. and taxes and that's insurance and, and all that and, and, and then whatever is left net is your positive cash flow. Exactly. Okay, exactly. sounds good. And okay, so positive. Good, good, good. And, 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 and so let's talk about the second deal. Similar, uh, just tell us what happened to the second deal. With so the second deal, I went with a uh, hard money lender. Okay. So that means somebody who has money and he become your bank. Yes. Because I couldn't qualify for a mortgage with a bank. So I went with hard money lender. And he financed this property a hundred percent. Yeah, I want to hear this completely. I want people to hear this. People keep telling me because I've used hard money lenders, and people are afraid and scared and all that kind of stuff. I want people to hear this very carefully. She's got like banks finally basically saying to her, we, "We're not going to give you money." And I keep telling people, "There's always a way to get money, right?" Mm -hmm. So, so tell us about this property. And if somebody doesn't understand what a, actually. I'll explain the hard money lender, but explain to us the arrangements of hard money lender and what it required to work with this hard money lender and what kind of percentage are being paid. Oh, okay. so uh, this person already met him in a meetups in a, here in London. So we, we connect on our social media. We already know each other. Okay. Right? Yeah. And when I saw this property, I reach out to him. I say, I really like this property. Can you find, give me some money? And at the beginning, he say, uh, do you, can you put down 20%? And they say, yes. But this property needs, needed uh, really a lot of work. But it was in a good location. And then because we friend, and he said, you know what? I'm going to give you 100%. So you can use that down payment for renovation. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so give me some numbers. Uh, what was, how much, how much was the property? How much repairs were needed? Just give me some numbers. The property, I, because I, I bought it with a food seller. Are you going to explain all this? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Just keep right. going because I want okay. people I want people who are saying, I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of that and, 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 and all that stuff. I want, you, I want them to hear your story. So keep going. Okay. So this uh, property is a bungalow. I bought it for 285 But in the same neighborhood, uh, over property were being sold for uh, 360 370 but because I went with a wholesaler, he sold it to me two eighty five. But I pay him ten thousand of. Uh, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, so was it two eighty five including his fee or two eighty five no, plus his fee? Plus, plus so, ten thousand. So cost you, you, you bought it two ninety five. Yes. Okay. But the value, the comps is are like three sixty three seventy. Okay, and and what kind of repair did it need? It's cosmetic. Just oh, so it wasn't was a lot of repairs. No, 
just paint and the new kitchen. So how much did it cost you to repair? 25,000, okay. everything included. So 25,000, so you buy for 295, yeah. plus 25 is 300, 320. 320. Plus 320, mm. plus some carrying costs. No, uh, how long did it take you to repair? A month. A month. Yeah. And and then and then how long did it take you to uh, get it? What, what did you rent it out? Yes, it is rented right away. <laughs> right away. Okay. Right away. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So the the comps were how much? The comps, three sixty, three seventy. Okay, so you still again you bought it almost twenty percent below market value yeah. even after repairing. Yes. Okay, and what's the cash flow every month? Uh, right now is uh, around. For the property, that now you have two properties that are producing cash flow, and, uh, and, and, and you bought both of them, nothing down, none of your money. Strategy number one was joint venture, down payment partner strategy, and the strategy number two is getting somebody to give you hundred percent of the money not like 80 percent 90 percent because the value of the property was b below market value somebody was willing to give you hundred percent of the money and then they have a first lien on the property correct yes okay so so this is very important for you to understand that it is very very important and what when fanny talked about wholesaler is what the, like in private investment club we have a lot of wholesalers as well as people with money that you can do joint venture with. So, uh, and hard money lenders as well. Uh, millionaires, multi-millionaires who are, who are looking to make more money uh, on their return. So if you find a good deal that brings good cash flow for you, then it doesn't almost matter how much money you're giving to make this happen. In, in, in the first instance, Fanny is doing 50-50 joint venture, which means she has to split everything 50-50, which is great. Yes. In the second opportunity, she's 100% owner and mm -hmm. she doesn't have to split the 50-50, but then she has to give 11%. So if she's making, um, you know, we're talking about mortgage pay down, we're talking about uh, uh, appreciation exactly. mm -hmm. and long-term, we're looking at the long-term, by the way, exactly. not short-term, exactly. as yeah. well as cash flow. Yeah, she's, exactly. she's doing really well. Uh, this, this, is, um, this is fascinating because I've done hundreds of properties doing nothing down. Some of my members have done lots of them. And uh, as Fanny said, upcoming, uh, the wholesalers, by the way, are people who, can, who, who, find, who are good at finding good deals and they wholesale it to you. They, they give it to you at a wholesale price, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then you need to build relationship with some of these people to do that exactly. stuff. Exactly. Or you become the wholesaler yourself, good at finding good exactly. deals, yeah. and then you find joint venture partner, just like what Fanny's doing. So exactly. there's really no excuse, Fanny, right? Uh, for yeah. people who have no money to say, I can't do it. There's no excuse. No excuse. Awesome. No excuse. Awesome. Yeah. So, so Fanny, um, uh, of course, we have uh, a goal of making 100 millionaires. You're mm -hmm. not there uh, yet, but you're going to be one of them, correct? Very soon. Very soon. <laughs> Very and, soon. Yes, and I love that idea to do that stuff. So, I, I any when people are thinking of investing, uh, what's the number one reason why you're investing? Where you say. If I'm looking for a deal and if the deal, you look at something like maybe due diligence number or something, you say, I know it's a good deal. What is that? How so do you know it's a good deal? A good deal, it has to, you have to know the numbers. If you don't know the numbers, it can be a good deal. You have to make sure you have positive cash flow. Ah, positive, positive cash, flow. cash flow. And a good location because location is very important. Okay, and, and I'm assuming you, you like London, Ontario. London, Ontario, yeah. Yes, awesome. And when the if the market was to slow down in the future, because I'm going to have a, a a a meeting, a private investment club meeting, talking about where we're going with coronavirus and what's going to happen and predictions and all that stuff. But let's say if the market was to slow down in in London, Ontario, would that be a good opportunity or bad opportunity to invest in real estate? It would be a good opportunity to buy. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if you can buy below the market value, why not? Yeah. Because at some point you're gonna come by. 
Of course. And, yeah. and if you buy it below market and it produces cash flow, then, then, then it's very good, isn't it? Exactly. Even if the value goes down, you still have a cash, uh, positive cash flow of the program. You're going to yeah. just wait until it comes back. That's right. Yeah. So, so for people who have, uh, are thinking of investing in the new future, it's a great time to, it could be a great time to invest in real estate if you buy passive cash flow. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. So um, tell us how people can get hold of you, Fanny, and then tell us about your company. Okay. I'm on uh, social media. Yes. And, uh, with the name Green Mind Properties. Green Mind. Green Mind Properties on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So you can uh, reach out to me either way, uh, Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. And, and I understand you're writing uh, uh, upcoming, uh, a best-selling book with Brian Tracy and I, correct? Yes, I did. Yes, yes, I did. Show, do you have it? Show us the book. There you go. Secret to wealth. There you go. Number and, two. And, 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 and let me ask you this. Um, for you, what's your plan in the next 24 months uh, for the real estate? What's your plan? How much, how much money you want to make? Like, what's your goal? My goal is to become financial free. That means I don't need that nine to five to live. I need, um, my plan is to have enough, uh, my, to increase my portfolio and I don't need a job anymore. Right, and, and, and do you have a number in mind, like uh, you know, a certain amount of uh, net worth, certain amount of cash flow uh, that you would like to make in the next 24 months? My goal is uh, ten thousand a month. Ten thousand—that's a good starting point, right? Yeah. yeah. But you're not going to stop at ten thousand, correct? No, I'm not going to stop there because, <laughs> you know, it's not being greedy. It's even if you have more money, you can help so many people. Yes. You can, there's so many uh, organization helping uh, like homeless or children. So you can help so many people. Well, you know, uh, when you were at the last meeting, we, uh, we talked about how a private investment club uh, went to India in yeah. December of 2019, and we did 150 eye surgeries, you know, and, and, and brought the, the gift of eyes, eyesight yeah. to people. And, that's, that, uh, and they were doctors, there were uh, volunteers, there were people who were helping to make this all happen. But all they needed was somebody to come and finance the whole thing, right? And then so our goal was, I personally went there, first of all, to make sure that that was happening. And secondly, to experience it myself, to see it, oversee it and all that stuff. So members of Private Investment Club and us, we got together and we did this 150 surgeries. So the, your point of making lots of money and, 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 and then and giving it to, to the world is, is amazing. Yeah, but imagine this kid, you change their life forever. Yes. Now we can see. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, in India, what they did was, which was interesting, is that they and and, and you know they they basically had uh, a breadwinners, a lot of them who were blind or going blind, uh, or, or or legally blind, and and then so now they 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 can't work and they're at home and then now somebody else is looking after them and all that kind of plus their self esteem and all Big that term. stuff. Yeah. So what they did was they they obviously. We, India's got 1.4 billion people. So we need more people to, to take care of that. So they apply. And then basically one of the criteria was, of course, they pay nothing. They, yeah. they don't pay for medication. They don't pay for checkups. They don't pay for pre-checkups during, post, nothing. But what they did was they picked out all the uh, people that would go out and, and then go out and earn for their families. So the, the point was if one person got their eyesight back, they were helping that family. Exactly. You know, and, yeah. and, 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 and not only the self-esteem and not only the fact that you, you brought the eyesight to that person individually, but then they went out and then they started working and then brought food for their kids and, you know, and, and spouses and wives and, 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 all, and that's just the way it is. And a lot of them are so poor yeah. uh, that, that, that they're not gonna attend uh, my event. They're not going to become members of my club or trainings and all of that because they, they, they're basically struggling to eat. Yeah. And then, and sometimes we need to help those people a lot. Absolutely. And that we impact the whole community. Yes. Because if this person now can go get a job, 
now we make the economy going and that we, we impact the whole uh, community. Awesome, awesome. So I want to share some uh, books uh, with you guys. Um, one is uh, The uh, Secret to Real Estate Wealth. Uh, this is a book that I wrote, became a bestseller uh, for, the, for, for the book. And the other one is um, Secret to Wealth. And this is a book where I wrote seven steps to becoming wealthy. And if you, these are all available on amazon.ca or amazon.com, depend on where you are right now. And, 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 and so main point to understand is that there are some amazing opportunities coming in real estate. And the reason why I do these interviews is because there are so many people watching news and, and a lot of news is all about fear of exactly. that stuff. And, yeah. and Fanny, thank you for being the good news. Thank you for being <laughs> the inspiration to people. And thank you for being the person that says, you know what, I, I can do it and I've done it. And, and, and it's, it's not just the fact that you're a member of private investment club. And of course I helped you do that kind of stuff, but the fact that you did it is the most important part. And I look forward to having you on my stage one day when you become a millionaire or multimillionaire uh, to have uh, this, because that's really my, my mission is to make 100 millionaires and multimillionaires and the upcoming times in the future, may be the best time. If you know what you're doing, if you have educated yourself, you're connected with the right people, you're connected with people who can find good deals, you connect with people who have money, joint venture partners, and, and know how to do it. And, and, and Fanny is a great example of how you do this. Uh, and, and, and so it's not just me who's done hundreds of deals, nothing down, and a lot of my members, but it's people who are starting out can do it. And I want you to go out and not allow fear to get in the way of what's happening outside, fear of losing money, fear of this. If your goal is to make lots of money, go do it. Of course, there's a risk, and, yeah. but you can minimize that risk exactly. and, and you can invest safely. Fanny, thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate you. And if everybody, if you uh, want to get hold of Fanny, uh, Fanny, once again, tell us uh, your, how, how uh, what's your company's name? Green Mind Properties and uh, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So Green Mind Properties. Green Mind Properties. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much, everybody. And if you have any questions, go to privateinvestmentclub.com, privateinvestmentclub.com. And also there's a, uh, an audio book that you can have for absolutely uh, zero cost. It's called makeamillion.net. Go to makeamillion.net and you can get download the audio book. Fanny, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much, Sunny, and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.